Welcome to 2019. Time for a new main base design. Meet Das Bunker. Yes, I know that's not how you say it and write it in German, but scheiß drauf. My goal was to design a base which protects the TC and the main loot by at least two sheet metal and one armored wall. That's equivalent to 31 sheet metal doors. The base achieves this by burying TC and main loot inside of an underground stability bunker. If the stability seal is in place, it requires 31 rockets to breach it from any angle. Since the design uses triangles only, the footprint remains comparably small. The build cost is about 20k stone, 10k metal fragments and less than 200 HQM. The daily upkeep can be met by farming about 5 stone and 7 metal nodes, plus recycling a few components. It features a core loot room with a level 3 workbench protected against 20 rockets, which is reached by a drop-down chute that is guarded by undrainable traps, a second floor core protected from 12 rockets with more boxes and a level 2 workbench, a hallway circling around the whole base fitting all your other utilities, roof access and anti-raid turrets that can be put in and out of action from within the safety of the base, even without electricity. The initial stages of the build do not assume any blueprints, thus the base absolutely works for early wipe. To make the base as strong as possible, the most important blueprints are reinforced glass window, garage doors, wood shutters, ladders and shotgun traps. To round off the design, you'd hope to get the blueprints of auto turrets, metal window bars, vertical embrasures, barricades, as well as beds and lockers. Since the build is a bit complicated, I'll take my time to thoroughly walk you through all the important steps. The main entrance has lots of windows to spot and engage door campers. Up here, we find our first anti-door camper turret. Climb onto the ladder and open up the garage doors like this to put it in and out of action from inside the base. Behind this door, you find drop-off chests, which can be accessed from both sides. This makes it easier to retrieve the loot later for sorting. This door leads us into the heart of the base. Behind the right garage door, we find the hallway. Items are placed so you don't have to jump while moving through it. Behind the two windows, we find the other two lateral turrets. Going back, behind the left garage door, we enter the core of the base. The chute leads into the main loot and crafting room. It is guarded by undrainable traps, which can hold off raiders for quite a long time. Below the turret, we enter the basement. Store your most valuable loot here. Before you go offline, place a wooden half wall in front of the TC, soft side facing towards you. Then, place a triangle on top and upgrade it to armored for just 7 HQM. Note that you can place the floor tile from the inside as well as the outside of the basement. When you come back online, spawn inside the basement, take a tool such as a sword or a hatchet and destroy the half wall. Let's head back upstairs. This ladder leads to the roof. Behind the three doors we find an optional bedroom. These two garage doors lead to the outside of the roof, which optionally can even become a shooting floor. Now let's head into the build. Unless you're in a very quiet area, I recommend building this base from a dedicated starter base. My suggestion would be the mini fort. Not only is it a very quick to build starter base, it also has a shooting floor which later allows you to act as a flanking base. Find a decently flat piece of land and bring about 1.5k wood. Lay down a hexagon low to the ground, but not too close to the ground. This is very important because this is where your sleeping bags of the inside of your basement will go. Then put a ring of raised triangles around it. If you want to be sure that the whole base will fit, build this whole footprint now. Find the spot that's closest to the ground and add two squares. Then add 10 more triangles around the outside. The final foundation plan should look like this. Now since we know the orientation of the base, let's double check that the bags can be placed. Destroy the triangle foundation of the basement which is furthest away from the square foundations, as well as the two foundations left of it. Place a half wall and triangle floors on top and check whether you can fit sleeping bags underneath. If that's the case, you're good to go. Next. Our goal will be to put down a TC and protect it. 
Bring about 4K stone, 2K wood, a TC, a wooden single door and two locks, ideally cold locks. Upgrade the remaining three foundations of the core and the six surrounding triangles. If you have a lot of metal fragments, upgrade those outer foundations to sheet metal already. It costs 600 metal fragments instead of 950 stone. For this tutorial, I am assuming that at this point metal fragments are still precious for you, so we use stone first. Upgrade the floor tiles above the sleeping bags and the half wall that holds them, then add two more floor tiles on the other side. Place your tool cupboard on the open foundation, the one that is closest to the square foundations. It should be close to the side without foundations, but you need to make sure to leave enough space or you won't be able to seal the bunker. You can double check the placement by ensuring that a half wall will place here. Don't forget to lock the TC. Next let's wall in the starter unit. Place two half walls behind the TC and upgrade them to stone. Place a single door frame on the opposite side of the TC and add a door. You will later need to destroy it, so leave it wood for now. Have the door open inwards. This makes it easier to close it from the inside of the base if you get door camped during the build. Place four full walls, two on each side of the TC. Then close off the ceiling. Just leave the triangle above the door frame wood as well. At this point it might make sense to destroy all the twig foundations to avoid giving your neighbors too much insight into what you're building. For this video however, I'll leave them in place so you can use them as reference points. Now that we have the TC protected, let's turn the core into our starter unit. To be able to get in and out of the basement, place a twig foundation here. Next to it should be the sleeping bags of the team members who are responsible for breaking the stability seal of the bunker. Ideally, the bunker fits two sleeping bags. If you're more than two people, put down more sleeping bags wherever there's space, but be ready to move them out of the way as the build progresses. Use the space behind the TC to put down a few temporary boxes to store your early loot. The next thing you want to do is create an airlock. Place two double doors, one left, one right of the exit. Both doors should open outwards. If that's the case, they will block the exit even if the outer door is open. Use this to safely deal with door campers. Now let's build in the TC. Place two half walls behind the TC and two half walls here. However, don't upgrade the lower one and destroy it once you're done. From this moment on, you can stability seal the basement. To do that, put down a twig half wall in front of the TC with a soft side facing you. Then put a floor tile on top and upgrade it. To break the seal, spawn inside the basement and destroy the twig with your rock. Please note, the basement is still susceptible to soft side picking. 23 spears and the raiders are in. Thus, let's get metal fragments cooking. Place furnaces into this corner and start smelting away. If you had to use key locks, the first batch of metal fragments is probably best invested in cold locks, so your teammates can enter and exit the base without hassle. The next priority are two sheet metal double doors to make the base flame rate proof. Then spend 600 metal fragments on upgrading the foundations. If for one of the foundations it does not give you the option to upgrade it, remove the object next to it and try it again. By now you might have accumulated some loot, so let's invest it into large boxes. Jump into the basement and try to place a large box instead of the twig foundation. This may take a while and not always be possible. If the ground below the basement is too uneven, you might have to leave that box out. If you can place it but it is too low, put a lantern on top of it to elevate you while you jump. Now replace the small boxes in the basement with three large boxes. 
Here I'm trying to leave a bit of space between the box and the foundation so that we can later upgrade them again to armored without having to pick them up. Place a triangle floor tile above the entrance to the basement and upgrade it to stone. If you have trouble getting out now, remember that you need to crouch after you jumped off the ground to make these kind of jumps. The tier 1 workbench goes as close as possible to the wall right next to the basement entrance. Another large box can fit on top of these triangles. We leave out the second box because this is later where the traps will go. Add another double door in front of the basement entrance. Finally, I recommend to spend another 850 metal fragments on upgrading the basement ceiling and all walls surrounding the TC to sheet metal. You might have to remove this box to reach everything from within the bunker. For a cost of about 280 metal fragments, that is about 5 metal nodes, you now own a starter base which, if sealed, protects your TC and main loot from 23 satchels. That should work for early wipe. Now it's time to extend the base upwards and make the entrance more secure. Locate the triangle on the opposite side of the wooden ceiling. Below it, build a half-height floor triangle as temporary staircase. Place a double door frame with a double door opening inwards and two more double doors on each side behind the triangle opening outwards. Then surround the rest with walls and put a ceiling on top. Now go back inside and soft side hatch it out the wooden triangle floor tile. Put a furnace into this corner to be able to jump onto the second floor. Now walk outside and seal the wooden entrance. Jump back inside and soft side hatch it out the wooden door frame. Close the gap with a wall and upgrade it to sheet metal. Jump back onto the second floor and place a sheet metal wall above the door that leads to the furnaces. Then upgrade the floor tiles to sheet metal as you may not be able to reach them later. Go to the other side and remove the door. We're going to create another loot room here. Place a twig half wall to create two raised floor tiles to act as shells. Again, upgrade them to sheet metal now. Then place four large boxes and don't forget to replace the door. Next, we're going to enclose the whole build with stone walls. Upgrade the next layer of foundations to either stone or if possible to sheet metal. Go in front of the square foundations and look at the base. Add foundation steps to the right side and twig U-shaped stairs on the left side. Now place stone walls all around the upgraded foundations. Then put floor tiles all around, excluding only the one triangle in front of the entrance to the core. This will allow us to build and upgrade the honeycomb step by step to sheet metal from inside the walls, so you don't have to save up tons of material first. Stand on the U-shaped stairs Place a stone floor here. Place a single door frame on the left side and a double door frame on the right side. Don't forget to add in the doors. Close up the triangle in front of the entrance to the core. Have a double door facing the other double door. If you want external auto turrets for base defense, you need to place two window frames on the second floor. To find the right spot, walk from behind the doors you just placed until the next corner and then place the window frame just behind the corner. Repeat the same thing for the other side. If you don't have the reinforced glass window BP yet, these windows are a weak spot, so feel free to use normal walls instead. Surround the rest of the floor with stone walls. Close everything off with a ceiling. Leave the floor tile behind the first double door wood for the roof entrance. Now let's finish the airlock so you have a safe way of getting in and out of the base. Upgrade the square foundations, ideally to sheet metal. Place a single door in front of the foundation steps, add a double door in the middle of the two foundations and another double door on the second floor. Make sure that the double doors open towards the respective single door to block passage when it's open. If you have the reinforced glass window VP or expect to find it soon, place window frames all around the first floor. Otherwise feel free to use metal shop fronts. 
Upgrade the floor above the exit to sheet metal to avoid pickaxe grating. For the second floor, I like to use more windows. They help to fight door campers and provide better situation awareness. Wood shutters and metal window bars are ideal for them. Next, we work on the loot room in the core above the bunker. Now that the upper corridor is secured, move furnaces upstairs. A row of furnaces should fit nicely behind the entrance to the core. Then, let's turn the previous furnace room into another main loot room. Remove the double door. Upgrade this half wall to sheet metal. Place two large boxes onto the floor. And if you have the BP, place a shotgun trap against this wall. Then add two half height triangles and upgrade them to sheet metal. Put down the final two boxes and add another shotgun trap if you can. Another furnace can help to boost you into the right position. Once you're done, put the door back on. While you're at it, let me show you the placement of the rest of the shotgun traps. One goes at the rear next to the box. Another shotgun trap goes in the forward triangle. Thus, for each day that raiders destroy, they will be presented with another hard to drain trap. Finally, jump into the basement and check whether you can place a trap above the sleeping bags. If you don't have the shotgun trap blueprint yet, don't worry, you can do all of this at a later stage. At this point, ideally also start to replace double door with garage doors. For the sake of simplicity, I'll just go ahead and replace all of them at once. Please note that the garage doors next to the chute have their bulky side facing away from the chute. I don't want raiders to be able to walk onto them and get a good angle for throwing explosives at our traps. This might also be a good time to replace the furnace with a ladder. The most important place for a garage door is the entrance to the second floor core. To match the strength of the walls in the final upgrade stage, you ultimately want garage doors everywhere inside the second floor of the core, as well as around the triangle with the wooden ceiling. However, don't stress yourself, this can be done bit by bit. The second floor further should house your tier 2 workbench. Place it on the triangle opposite of the loot room. This should leave enough space to place a locker here, assuming that you have the BP. If you get attacked and you need to spawn in the core, use this locker to equip yourself rapidly. Also, place down sleeping bags here for the friends or the more casual members of your group. Next, we work on the drop chest room. This is a room with chests for rapidly dropping loot, which you got from farming or killing other players, so you can quickly get back out again. Behind this single door, we're going to make a novel drop chest room that can be accessed from both sides. Close off this wall with a window frame and ideally add vertical embrasures. Use a twig half wall to place two triangle floors at half height. Fill this loot room with four boxes and seal off the inner side with a window with embrasures as well. Close off the corridor on the other side with another single door. If you go offline, consider sealing off the drop chest room with reinforced glass windows. When you come back from farming, drop your stuff on this side of the room. If you want to sort those items away, you can access the boxes from within the main corridor. By now, the main parts of the base are functional and you can hopefully focus on accumulating metal fragments and high quality metal to maximize the protection of the core. Let's upgrade the basement to its full strength first. For that, save up 188 HQM. The fastest way to do that is to recycle, in particular electrical components. Go into the basement. Start by upgrading all six surrounding foundations to armored for 78 HQM. If the upgrade is blocked, pick up the item next to it and try again. Use another 28 HQM and upgrade the four lower floor tiles. Spend the remaining 72 HQM to upgrade the floor tile and the three walls surrounding the TC. Finally, upgrade the triangle and the half wall holding up the floors to at least sheet metal. Replace all items that you had to pick up. By now, you might have gotten your hands on a tier 3 workbench. If you're looking for a good spot for it, go into the core, hatchet out the tier 1 workbench and place it here as close as possible to the stability seal. Note that the shotgun trap we placed earlier might block its placement. You also might now be the proud owner of an auto turret. The first auto turret that you find should go above the entrance to the basement and point at the chute. 
Upgrade the floor tile to sheet metal at this point. Place it far back so it won't get damaged by splash damage if raiders shoot explosive ammo at the garage door. In this position, it's undrainable and a nightmare for raiders to deal with. To increase the strength of these traps, consider to optionally upgrade the floor tiles above the core to armored for 35 HQM. Now let's work on the honeycomb. We left the hole in the floor so you can work on the honeycomb in peace. Jump down into the first floor and start by upgrading the inner walls to sheet metal. Upgrade the floor tiles above each armored foundations to sheet metal as well. Next, upgrade the stone foundations to sheet metal. Place sheet metal walls around the armored foundations. While doing so, you need to work your way from the far side towards the hole to not wall yourself in. Just before the hole in the ceiling, place an extra sheet metal wall between the sheet metal foundations, upgrade the floor above to sheet metal, as well as the wall towards the airlock. For placing the last wall, jump out of the honeycomb, destroy the twig foundation and place the wall from above. You have to replace the twig floor which can be quite difficult if you don't have a ladder. The most reliable way I found is to crouch close to the airlock and let yourself slowly fall down while spamming the left mouse key. Upgrade the floor tile to sheet metal. Then jump out and seal the floor with another sheet metal floor tile. Finally, upgrade this wall to sheet metal too. Complete the honeycomb by upgrading all the remaining foundations outside of the base to sheet metal. Right now, the bunker can be seen through the cracks of the sheet metal foundations. My recommendation is to fill all the gaps with stone foundations. For one, these are obscure. Further, they make the base look a little bit unfinished, which is always good to appear less rich. Head back into the corridor and upgrade all the inner walls to sheet metal. The ceiling needs to be upgraded to at least sheet metal as well, and it needs to be armored if you don't want to add anything else to the roof. Add another half wall above the chute and upgrade it to sheet metal. If you seal the basement now, it should be 31 rockets from any angle. Now that the core of the base is upgraded, let's fill in the corridor with useful stuff. Here is my suggestion for an efficient use of the space. The location right behind the drop chest room will become a bedroom. The first bed should clip as far as possible into the doorway. The second bed should go as close as possible to the first. A locker fits nicely in the gap and allows to quickly gear up after having spawned. A small box next to it can be used to store food, mats and ammo. Compartmentalize the section with a double door that opens towards the beds. To smoothly access the drop chest room, you will need to fit one or two small boxes into the triangle behind the door. For the rest of the corridor, I'd recommend to run large boxes along the inner wall, as it's easy to walk over them. Along the outer wall you can fit more boxes, a research table and repair bench, a barbecue and furnaces. Unless you're swimming in gears, you can use double doors to section off the corridor. Now let's work on the roof exit. Build up or ladder onto the roof. Place three door frames and four window frames as shown and put a ceiling on top of everything. Fill the window frames with reinforced glass windows and wood shutters. For the doors, I'd recommend to have them open in a way that only the outer door acts as an airlock. The other doors should open outwards to allow to quickly pass them. Go back inside the base and start chopping out the wooden floor tile. To get to the roof, open the window shutters and place the ladder as high as possible. You now have a working roof exit. Since I extensively used the Phoenix version 2, I realized how powerful external turrets are. They don't only keep door campers away and control the immediate surroundings of the base, they also helped us to defend against three online raids. We really love the sense of protection that they provide when farming or fighting close to the base. 
Thus, once you get your hands on the turret blueprint, let's build four anti-door camper cells. The first one should go in front of the entrance to fight off door campers. Place a triangle floor next to the door and upgrade it to sheet metal. Ladder onto it, place another floor tile on top and garage doors left and right. Make sure that the bulky side of the garage door is inside of the triangle. Add another twig triangle and use it to place the turret in about the center of the triangle. Now run back into the airlock and put a ladder down in front of the window behind the turret. This allows you to open and close the garage door as well as to service the turret from within the base. The second turret should guard the roof. Locate the triangle that has already the ladder on the other side and add a turret compartment in front of it. Put down the turret as close as possible to the window this time. Optionally, add two shotgun traps to cover the dead angles. One should point towards the airlock, the other one towards the main entrance. Run inside the roof airlock and replace the reinforced glass window with window bars so you can refill the turret from inside the base. The two remaining turrets go in front of the windows that we left in the corridor. The procedure to build these two turrets is the same as for the turret above the ground level entrance. In both cases, consider to exchange the reinforced glass window with window bars and wooden shutters. To prevent the door campers evade the turrets by staying close to the walls, place barricades all around the base. I usually find tons of barricades during component farming and I never know what to do with them. There are still a few spots where door campers can ladder up easily. First, a barricade should go on top of each of the turrets. Remember that open garage doors can prevent their placement, so make sure that they are closed. Right above the door, you can either place a barricade as well, or do another sneaky thing. Add two low walls and attach a shotgun trap facing the door. This should be a nasty surprise for everyone who tries to ladder up there. At the same time, the trap is only visible from very far above the base. With this defense system, it's possible to defend against online raids, even if your PvP skills are as bad as mine. Optional, but highly recommended, add another bedroom on top of your roof. Add window frames around the hexagon core and fill in reinforced glass windows and wood shutters. The ceiling can be stone. Place up to three beds close to the windows. This should leave enough space for two lockers in the middle of the room. If you cannot place them, check whether you need to close the garage doors of the room below. You can do this from up here, which can be incredibly useful during an online raid. Place small boxes for food, meds and ammo into the gaps. You get onto the roof via the turret compartment. Design the rest of the roof as you like. Personally, I would leave it open as it is right now, or maybe add a ring of slanted roof for online raid defense. However, the outer ring can perfectly be used for a shooting floor to take down the heli. Simply place window frames or whichever type of shooting port you prefer all around the outer parts of the base. If you know in advance that you want to have a shooting floor, I'd recommend to leave out the ceilings above the turrets. Place solid walls outside of the triangles and a single door in front of it. This creates well-protected shoots to fight raiders who hug the wall of the base and even allows you to quickly jump out of the base. However, personally I prefer flanking bases and the turrets over shooting floors, so I won't include this in my final build. And voila, Das Bunker is done. 31 rockets worth of protection for the TC, ladder proof and online raid defendable. I hope you appreciate the build and the time I invested to sort out the build steps in detail. May the base bring you safely through the wipe. Until then, Evil Wurst out.